I have a version of tinnitus where I hear a whole variety of different sounds. It's always changing. Now I only get those super challenging days like every couple of weeks, which is insane. <laughs> so awesome. Sound therapy has been a very useful tool for me. It's a lonely place until you have somebody to sort of walk by your side. So at the moment, in my current status, I am doing very well. I um, am functioning uh, at a level that is 75% better than where I was when uh, about two years ago when I first got tinnitus. I'm super excited because I'm working again um, and I feel like I'm contributing to our household, which was really difficult when I had to leave my job originally because of tenant. And I'm also really grateful that I'm in a place that I know how to handle the varying um, symptoms of tinnitus, the varying levels, and I'm able to get back to an exercise routine that is um, kind of helping me find myself again. You know, I kind of felt like I lost that part of me. Um, and it was really hard to feel those losses. Um, so, so my exercise is, is really back where, not quite where it was, but in a way that is very satisfactory for me. And then also just my being able to be social with my family and my friends. I have learned how to make boundaries around that because I know I can't all the time, but I'm able to make plans and I can stick to those plans more often than not. And that's extremely fulfilling place to be compared to I missed, you know, some big holidays. I've missed some big birthdays. Um, I've had a lot of support along the way and understanding as I've learned how to communicate why I was having these problems, which were, you know, part of the process of working with you guys, but, um, and working with Suzanne, but it's just nice that now I can have a little bit more social experience. I can even go into like loud environments and I wear earplugs and, you know, I can listen to music. Um, I've gone on two trips which I wasn't able to travel successfully, or at least I tried traveling early on and I kind of blew up. It was really, really a, a, a really awful experience. So now I've done two car trips and I hope this summer, I haven't left time zones yet. <laughs> so I have a, a lot of issues around sleep. And of course, tinnitus was uh, and is, continues to be, you know, a part of that that daily process of dealing with how to sleep with tinnitus. And I definitely have some tools that I've learned and um, a lot of help along the way. So um, I think, you know, that really gives you a snapshot of where my life is now. Um, I'm a super type A person and I'm, you know, being able to do the things that I love uh, is really important to my identity. And I, and I kind of felt like when I first got tinnitus, I had to let go of so much. And I felt like I lost a lot of who I was or who I thought I was. But as Dan, my, uh, my wonderful audiologist always told me, it's like, you know, you're becoming a new version of yourself. And um, I think embracing that version of myself has been a whole part of this program. You know, it's certainly not, you know, if I had to go back and I, I'm not quite at the place where I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad I got tinnitus, <laughs> but I can say that, you know, I am living a really full life and I'm continuing to, you know, learn a lot about myself. Can you briefly explain what are your symptoms? What do you hear and where do you hear it? Sure. So I have a version of tinnitus where I hear a whole variety of different sounds. It's always changing. And that I think might have been for me one of the prob one of the hardest parts of kind of getting to a point where I could live and function day to day and just know that it didn't really matter what the sound is, that I was still able to do the things, you know, or how to manage that constant changing. So I have like five different uh, sounds and they also come in different levels. And I still have one particular sound that is 
very challenging for me, but it comes around less and less, which is great. And, and even on the days when I have that particular really challenging sound, which is a high pitch sound, that's the one for me that's very high, high pitch, constant. Um, I am actually getting through those days uh, better. So they're still hard, but like I said, I used to get them all the time, every day, every other day. It was just just ongoing forever. It just felt really heavy and hard. And now I only get those super challenging days like every couple of weeks, which is insane. (laughs) So awesome. So tell us about the timeline. How long did your treatment process take? And what were the breakthroughs or the challenges along the way? Well, the timeline, I first got tinnitus uh, January 14th of 2022. My husband had just been hit by a car the day before. That was extremely uh, stressful time. I think there were probably a lot of other factors that all culminated in that moment, but it was an instant onset. So that was, I guess, a little more than two years ago. And then I took the first like six months and just kept trying to find ways to get better. And um, I did learn about sound therapy almost around the same time that I discovered treble, you guys. And so sound therapy has been a very um, like just, a, you know, has been a very useful tool for me. It has changed a lot in how I use it now versus how I used it in the beginning. It's just been a constant relationship with what works and what doesn't work. And it's still changing. And so I think that's a really important message because at first I thought, oh, I, you know, it had to be a certain way because that's what I kept reading. And, and even before I started working um, with Suzanne, you know, the way that I thought I should be doing sound therapy wasn't exactly working for me. But then when I worked with Suzanne and we kept talking about it and she shared some of her experiences and it just made me feel like I wasn't crazy, you know, like just because this one particular way that I thought sound therapy should work didn't quite sync up with me, didn't mean it what couldn't still be a tool that I could use. And it definitely wasn't and and continues to be a tool that I use. Other than sound therapy, what helped you reduce your tinnitus? Well, I think that the cognitive um, behavioral, uh, um, the CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy has been really significant. It's so hard to say exactly (laughs) how that works, but I truly believe that the more I continue to work with that method, it started to play out for the things that I was saying out loud or continuing to remind myself. And it's a strange, you know, from somebody who doesn't come from a therapeutic background, I, all I know is that it definitely helped. It's really a little bit hard to put it into words exactly how, but um, I think it's really essential. And in addition to like working with treble and on the audiology end, I have also uh, worked with a therapist, a regular therapist as well. And I think that that combination for me was an essential part of it because there's the tinnitus piece and then there's the all the, the whole other part of me and it's kind of like bringing it all together uh, was really important. If you're anything like our patients, I know a lot of folks try things at the beginning or along the journey that actually don't work, but we're desperate. We're trying to find anything that can help us. So were there things along the way that you tried that actually didn't help that much? Yeah. uh, You know, unfortunately, I definitely am, you know, very passionate about the misinformation. And I know that's not exactly what you're asking me. I know that. I mean, I know there are things that work and maybe there were things that I tried and they didn't work for me, but there's also a lot of misinformation out there. And that to me is kind of heartbreaking. And I definitely was one of those people who thought after like something that would just remove this sound that's inside of my head. And there, you know, there was a couple of different products that I, you know, got 
uh, interested in and I purchased, and then I ended up being on a subscription list and I kept getting them. And of course, well, they didn't work for me, you know, and then just like a couple of weeks ago, my mother-in-law sent me a link to this exact product. And I, I felt so bad. At first, I just brought her back and I said, this is a scam. You know, then I apologized. And I just said, you know, this is something that I truly believe is it, it pulls people in and that there's just not enough data that shows that this type of product is going to be effective. Um, so yes, there were a variety of things that I tried. I even tried to exercise my way out of tinnitus <laughs> with, at the very beginning because I just didn't understand what was going on. It's a lonely place until you have somebody to sort of walk by your side. And, and that's why I love like with treble. And that's why now whenever I meet anyone, anybody, and I even sent this to my, my mother-in-law because she's, you know, in her eighties and she knows a lot of folks who are now experiencing tinnitus for another other reasons than than myself and they are desperate themselves and I'm like just call treble <laughs> you know or read their newsletter because if it's in their newsletter you know 100% and I'm not trying to be like an ad here it's just it's really nice to know that when something comes up through the treble organization it's it's because there's data behind it and I'm a really data oriented person but you throw those things out the window you know when you're desperate like, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Absolutely. In just a moment, we're going to bring in Dr. Suzanne May, who you worked with, who can explain more about how she programmed the sound therapy treatment and other approaches that she used to help you. Um, I want to ask you, though, Susan, what advice might you have for someone who is in the same shoes that you walked in, which is I have tinnitus sort of taking over my life. It's been a few months. I'm looking for things that can help. I'm on the Internet what advice would you have in terms of the next steps or the system that they should start using to get better? Well, if there's somebody like me having the accountability of an, of a live person to work with one-on-one -on -one was really the key for me. I know that there are other excellent programs and apps of which I have, I have used an app that I still use and has, was very effective. And, and continues to be very effective. But it wasn't until I started the one-on-one -on -one therapy that I really felt like somebody had my back. I could say really stupid things. I could ask the same question like a hundred times and still get an answer that maybe I, I couldn't grasp, I couldn't grasp, and then finally I would get it. So that one-on-one -on -one piece was really important. So that would be, you know, again, it's so different for everybody. But I think if you're really, really suffering, that getting that one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's only for a short period of time, is like you, it's packed full. You don't have to be searching. You don't have to be experimenting. You've got somebody who's just going to listen and then kind of like put it all together for you. Um, and you, you can kind of take a deep breath. Yeah. Absolutely. Dr. May, let's bring you into the picture here. You yourself have tinnitus. You've gone through a similar program. Perhaps you can touch on that briefly and then explain from your perspective what worked for Susan working with you at Tribal Health. So, yes, I have tinnitus and I have used sound therapy. So one of the things that we worked with Susan on was that sometimes, like she mentioned earlier, some sounds we like and some sounds we don't like. And it's okay to move to sounds that you find are helpful to you that we're looking for sounds that are not annoying to you, they're not intrusive, and making sure that they're set at a level where you can hear them, but they're, you know, mixing in with your tinnitus or underneath your tinnitus. And that can be anything from my favorite, which was frogs, to, you know, ocean waves, to whales. And so, you know, making sure that you find that sound that can, you know, work with your specific situation. And what worked for Susan from your perspective from the actual devices or the program that was in place? So for Susan, there was, what did we do, Susan? We did pink noise. I think we did waves. I think you tried the frogs. Up on um, my two at the end were rain and uh, the sound of a bicycle spoke going around. And those are still the two that I use. Not just because I'm a cyclist. <laughs> Tell us about that. What does the sound therapy do for you? Uh, how did it help you get to where you are today? You know, it just created a sound that was constant 
just like the tinnitus each and every day, although different, would be constant for the day. And it would sort of make me feel at ease that I could live with a constant sound. I'm just kind of guessing. Like it's, again, you know, I think Suzanne might be able to answer from the scientific perspective. But for me, it was just like, it was just soothing. I could have a sound going and that that sound didn't bother me. So why does this sound bother me? Right. And I think it's a, of course, it's a control thing. You know, I can control the other sound, but over time, you know, my brain would turn off that sound. And a lot of times that would help me turn off the tinnitus as well. So it just, it just is something that's uh, grounding and soothing. I will say though, that on my worst days, I wasn't really able to use the sound therapy because my tinnitus was in this range, even the white or the pink noise. And Suzanne and I talked about this a lot and, and she really helped me just navigate that that's okay. And, and she suggested like I would, instead of sound therapy to listen to music or, you know, of so many other things that I do use for distracting myself. I still play a computer game every single morning, every single morning I get up and I play this game and it just, there's something about it. Often I'll get up now and I think I'm headed towards kind of a funky day and I'll go outside, uh, feed my cats and play this game. And by the time I'm done, I'm off and running. So it's just this constant, um, I think it that works in a similar way as the sound therapy is just teaching your brain to like calm down. <laughs> you know, you figure these things like you once you know sort of the ideas behind these tools, then you, you one starts to navigate their own path, and that's what Suzanne kept telling me. You know, was like your path is going to be different than my path. And um, although I will say we had a lot of similarities and that was actually pretty helpful. So <laughs> I would ask her, are you sure you hear different sounds? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I promise. But just that camaraderie was very, very important for me. Susan, what final message do you have for the tinnitus community for folks who are watching on YouTube? And if you are watching on YouTube and this video has been helpful so far, please comment below, helpful. Susan, what message do you have for us? that there is a path, you know, to healing that it may seem like it just not improving in the case that you have in your mind that, you know, you feel like it should go, you know, some people seem to get better in three months, right. Or have a lot of relief in three months. And so, and it, it has nothing, it's like nothing to do. There's no, you know, um, you're not any worse than somebody else. Uh, just if it takes you longer, it's just, you got to stick with it and just have that trust. And like I said, the one-on-one -on -one piece was really important for me, but it's just a matter of finding out, finding what that, that therapy, um, through trusted, trusted source, um, is so, so, so important. So I think that it, you know, Everyone, I think, can find their way. It just you have to have just the stamina and resilience, and that person there that, or whatever it is that you choose, is going to be that tool um, to keep going. Hundred percent. We're so we're so happy that you're better, and there's still some progress that can be made. So keep on going. Uh, a few times in today's podcast, you mentioned working with Treble Health or one of our audiologists. We will include links below in the description for folks who want to schedule a consultation to learn more about Tribal Health. Dr. Suzanne May, Susan, thank you both so much. And everyone else, we'll talk to you soon.